yes that's fine so no no work involved there nothing more to do with the prism the prism's good the finder appears clear um, no sign of any of those nasty little dots that we had in there earlier so I'm very pleased with the state of that really I need to put the meter back into the camera body now I'm just checking to make sure that everything is ready to receive it find the correct screw to hold the this longer screw goes here you'll remember I put a short screw there while I was working on the camera the longer screw can go back in there there are two very short screws round headed screws that go here and here and hold the other end of the meter down so I'll need to set the camera, I'll remove the lens because this only goes to f2.8 with this set to B and f1.9 I should be able to lift my meter into place set to ASA 10 and I know roughly where the alignment should be I've got my meter here. Let's get that round to ASA 10. And I need to have this. Around there. About there is the correct alignment. Typically. Um, I don't think, unless somebody's been mucking with this, you see a, like a half moon shape visible through that hole there, and the line of the ASA scale passes roughly along the edge of that, uh, the teeth of that wheel at the top. That looks okay. So, first I'll make sure this is all cocked, because if it's cocked, it's cocked it'll take the tension off the uh, transfer shaft at this point I can remove this screw and I wouldn't if there's no screw in that position you never want to move the uh, move the film advance lever settle the meter in position the screw I just took out I'm replacing with the original screw which was longer Get that screw done up tight. Check that the meter is seated on the gear below it, which it appears to be. And get these two small screws in place. That wasn't one of them. That was the uh, short screw that I'd used. To hold the clamp down plate. Let's get that back out. I don't think that would cause any problems there, but it certainly doesn't need to be that long. That one started. Will this one start? Yep. Yeah. I have my three screws all in place, everything fixed. I'm going to go and test the meter 
and see how accurate it is. So I need to put that shroud around the meter cell. Put my top cover on and go and test the meter. I'll be back shortly. Well, the meter's reading two stops high. So what I'm going to do is remove this screw and that screw, which will allow me to lift the meter without disconnecting it at the other end. Roll my aperture setting back two stops, lower the meter back down into position, and go and recheck it. So where are we? We were there, and I want to be at F8. What I'm doing effectively here is moving the timing of the gear on the bottom of the meter relative to the camera. Alright, that dropped into position. The gears are engaged. I'll go and check it again, make sure it's accurate, make sure that I haven't foolishly moved it the wrong direction. Because uh, strangely enough these things happen. Well with only one more round of adjustments that's, that's looking very good. So I'm pleased with the state of that. Now that means that uh, I'm pretty much done with the camera body. I'm ready to start closing it up. So I'll lift the top cover off again, clean the inside of the finder, put the little window back in here which has fallen out, and close the top up. I've got to put that little meter window back in. This is always somewhat fraught. This really can't fall out once it's on the top of the camera or back in there. There's no space for it to fall away. So I just want to put a couple of dots of glue on it so it'll stick and as you take your glue stick away take it away from the glass not dragging it over the top because otherwise you're in danger of dragging a thread of adhesive over the plastic lens which will become very obvious now I'll lift this carefully into place Make sure that's settled. That's good. That, that was all I required to do with that. Now the top, I've blown all the dust out of the top. I've cleaned my viewfinder lens. The eyepiece of my prism, I'm just giving that a final wipe. Shroud goes around the front of the meter. Top cover fits over the top. Drops down into position. Oh, there's something missing. We haven't got our post here to go on the top of the body. Right. Put 
sticky tape around there now blocking my way so I have to trim that back should have put that in first Now we're in business. That doesn't need to be anything more than finger tight really. And if you attack it with a tool, there's always a danger with a shaft as wide as that, that you'll get over enthusiastic and in the process end up damaging something. Okay, the top, let's close the top. That screw goes in there. I've got a screwdriver to deal with that. Is that not lining up with the hole in the top too well? Yes, it's, it's pulled in. Two chrome screws at the rewind end. Careful to make sure you get the right ones. I've still got a nickel plated screws from the base of the camera to go on. Here is the other one. one chrome screw to go on the end of the top cover at this end and our meter setting button to screw in here Now a friction tool can be a handy thing for screwing that in. I've got a piece of uh, sticky rubber that I find handy for doing that job. It's less dangerous than using a tool like the spanner I use to get it undone. This will probably do it. That's fine. That's not in any danger of falling off. Check that I can adjust the meter, the film speed easily. Yeah, that moves freely. Locks into position. What do we need at the top of the camera? How about a rewind knob? There's the pieces for that. My tool for gripping these pinhead screws is this one. Just a brass cylinder, two holes drilled in the end, the appropriate distance apart. And the pins that I've pushed in there, I'm pretty sure from memory, they were uh, piano wire. You could use drill blanks or the tail of drill bits. Piano wire has the advantage there that uh, it's not as brittle as their drill blanks are likely to be. Alright, so we have our spring, our spring washer or wavy washer. I'll put some synthetic grease on that might remember that was a little bit rust mark when we started. Now that's good, that's nice and firm. I don't think we're short anything else for this part. Ok, 
occasionally you'll strike a camera that has a washer underneath the rewind and that would be to make sure that the rewind knob doesn't rub on the top cover as it revolves because that will scuff the chrome. We're done at the top of the camera. At the bottom of the camera I need to put the proper base back on here and then we can put the leatherettes onto the camera. I'm going to set my frame counter right around to number one so everything's locked. So that my film advance doesn't move. I don't want that backing up and disconnecting from the uh, cocking rack at the top. Because that is a bother and a nuisance. Making sure I've got my base plate handy. And a very smooth transition. Right, crisis averted. Now I've only got four more screws to put on this base plate. As you can probably tell as I've gone through servicing the camera, it's a handy thing to have the mortal remains of another Reflex 3 or similar model about that you can use to uh, hold parts while you're working on them. It's much easier that, that way to keep the springs in place when you've got a base plate like this with the edge chewed away to allow you to put the front of the camera back on and things of that nature. Similarly it was useful to have this body casting lying around loose that I could assemble the finder on. Though you could have done it on the camera body itself that we're working on. It's much easier if you've got a stray that you can use for parts or it uses a jig. Okay, well that, that's looking good. Where's my leatherettes? While I was finding my leatherettes, I found the washer that went under the rewind knob. I wasn't imagining things at all. Okay. So, the leatherettes, what am I going to do here? I think that what I'll do is I will apply a lot of adhesive to a piece of paper and I will transfer it over piece by piece on a toothpick in the interests of doing this fairly neatly. I'm 
Now the leatherettes have been scraped clean and they've been wiped down with naphtha to remove any oils on the surface. A bit more adhesive here, this one's sucking it up. You can tell by the look of these leatherettes that whoever, whoever did the original installation was exceptionally sparing with adhesive because normally you would find adhesive well bonded into the uh, fibres of the leatherette and that's not the case here at all. Okay, so there's our piece of leatherette. There's our camera body. Slide this one into position. Now this was loose on the camera when we started from memory. Make sure everything's pressed down firmly there. Roll it around the body casting at this end. This adhesive will rub away neatly while it's still wet. And get it off that chrome body edge. Just make sure that's pressed down firmly in there. And that the little pointy end on that leatherette is tucked down neatly into the body at that point so it's easy to overlook that and that with it doubled back or in some other way in a less than ideal fashion. I'll remove my shutter release lever or button. And the other front piece of leatherette here, well since the other piece was so enthusiastic to suck up the adhesive, I'm going to apply it, this stuff, direct to the leatherette and spread it on the leatherette. It's important to get the adhesive even and not too thick. You shouldn't see puddles of running liquid adhesive. I'm just removing excess here that looks good get that firmly seated around the shutter release area there and as with the other side make sure that that leatherette tucks down into that into the corners down there and it should be tucked in to the hinge line at that end that's looking good now I've just got a little bit come through onto the surface at that edge there, I'll just rub that away with a cotton bud. If it was harder than that, if it was drier, I'd need to put some um, naphtha on that cotton bud in order to remove that, but I didn't, that was a 
still quite wet. Okay, that's our leatherette on the front there. Where's our shutter release button? Let's get that back on there. Now we've got a leatherette patch to go on that shutter release but one that was just about run away. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, the adhesive on the back of it's a bit crusty. It's chipping away. That's so not really it's lost all its flexibility. Ah. I'll give that a wipe with a bit of naphtha. And that removes any grease that's on that, or might be on that, or oil, or anything of that nature. And um, any dust too. So I'll take a little bit of adhesive on a toothpick. Let's have a look at this piece. Okay, that's fine. And I'll just get that into place on the shutter release button. That only leaves us our leatherette on the base of the camera. These are a bit of a pain because they're so heavily perforated, there's not much leatherette left. I'll transfer this over with a toothpick. Try and get a clean, even layer of adhesive on here. Now I think that this camera is the last customer's camera I have here at present because the uh, United States Postal Service has suspended airmail to New Zealand, Australia, Samoa and a whole string of other places because of uh, transport difficulties by which I expect they mean that they can't get slots on the planes at the prices they're wanting to pay so stuff's not coming in right let's see if we can get this in place That looks good. Where's our lever?
That's good. We want our leatherette patch for the lever. Clean this with some naphtha. Just make sure there's no hard bumps on here. That's important, otherwise the uh, it won't lie down flat. It's got lumps and bumps of hard adhesive on there. Everything's sticking to my fingers because I've got enough adhesive on them to cause me grief. Now the leatherette does have a bit of a pattern or a grain to it. See if you can get the leatherette patch on the button in line with the other leatherette. That really only leaves me with my tripod socket, surround back catch cover. Do this. These are always a bit entertaining to do. The secret is you assemble the two main pieces together, you pass it one screw up through the longer of the slots because that's where the spring is going to go. Put the spring in position between the screw and the lever, like that. Lift it gently into position. If you have any reason to suspect that that spring moved, stop, do it again. Because if that spring gets trapped where it shouldn't be, you'll end up damaging the spring. But if everything goes smoothly, you just lift it straight on, run that screw in, check the action, run the other screw in, that's our camera body done. Oh, I better put that washer under the uh, rewind lever now that we've discovered it. It just went on there and its sole purpose in life was to lift the rewind button slightly so that it wouldn't rub on the top cover. That's our Retina Reflex 3 but I better do the, uh, the lens. I've probably serviced enough of these that I don't need to add this to this particular video. I'm sure you'll find them one somewhere else. So I'll service that and then put it back on the body. I won't show you me doing that. I've done a lot lately. Well it's done. The lens has been serviced. Everything's moving nice and smoothly. Depth of field pointers move smoothly. Focus is much smoother now. Um, glass is clean, camera of course is all done and ready to go, meter appears to be accurate, shutter's good, I think I'm done with this, so this is our Retina Reflex 3, this one's been completely stripped and serviced and now it's ready to go home, thanks for watching.